So now I've uh, talked about some of the effects that climate change will have in, in, in the future and are having now. We already have amplified storms. No, climate change doesn't just create storms, but it does end up fueling storms that are actually more destructive. Not only that, but it also in certain areas creates drier conditions. Uh, and in some places like, for example, where I live, uh, helps to contribute to really strange storms like bomb cyclones and all sorts of cra crazy stuff. Now, one of the effects that doesn't get talked about a lot, at least that I see, is the permafrost and what's happening to the permafrost. Now, in geology, the permafrost is defined as any soil that has been frozen or, more, or, or frozen for more than two years. Now, how much permafrost is there? There's about 8.8 million square miles uh, of land that is frozen. That is 24% of exposed earth. That is a lot of permafrost. It's a lot of frozen ground. So why should we care about, care about this? Why should we care that it melts? Why is this important to climate change? Well, over time, naturally occurring compounds in the atmosphere, such as mercury and carbon dioxide, can bind with organic material in the soil and be frozen into the permafrost, potentially remaining trapped underground for thousands of years. So the problem is, is that we've got all these, uh, you know, gases, uh, especially carbon, but again, things, compounds like mercury that are frozen into the ground. Great. It can stay frozen. Not a problem if it stays frozen. <laughs> problem is, is that it's not going to stay frozen. Now, I talked about, like I said, mercury, right? Well, according to a new study published February 5th in the journal Geophysical Research Letters, there may be more than 15 million gallons of mercury buried in the permafrost in the norm of the Northern Hemisphere. That is roughly twice as much mercury as can be found in the rest of the Earth's soils, ocean, and atmosphere combined. So there is a major source of mercury that is sitting under the ice. They warn in this study that if global temperatures continue to rise, that mercury will be released, along with, of course, the carbon and methane and zombie viruses, not like an actual zombie apocalypse virus, but viruses that have been dormant for thousands of years will suddenly come back. That's stuff that we don't have an immunity to, and that's stuff that we don't know, necessarily know how to treat. So, wonderful. Good luck with that. Uh, now, this is uh, study author Paul Schuster. Uh, and this is, uh, he is a hydrologist at the U.S. Geological Survey in Boulder, Colorado. He released a statement about this, and he said, to quote, there would be no environmental problem if, if everything remained frozen. But we know the Earth is getting warmer. So this discovery is a game changer. So, look, if, this is, if, if it's not bad enough, what we have going on with global warming, well, now we know that there are actually more terrible things in the way when it comes to melting permafrost. And we don't actually know what the impact of all this mercury being released will actually uh, be. Now, previous studies have attempted to account for the billions of tons of carbon dioxide, methane, and even the zombie pathogens that could be loosed into the air and the oceans by melting permafrost. However, the environmental impact of a large-scale mercury leak remains an unpredictable problem. One major concern is that this mercury could seep into nearby waterways and transform into methylmercury. That, that is, of course, a toxin that causes motor impairment and birth defects in animals. Now, Etta Mutter, science director for the Yukon River Intertribal Watershed Council, said, quote, oh, said that uh, that contamination could travel up the food chain from microorganisms to humans. Uh, and of course, that would have a huge impact on the food supply in these areas. She says, rural communities in Alaska and other northern areas have a substance lifestyle, making them vulnerable to methylmercury, contaminating their food supply. So that would be a big problem. So that's a food supply that is no longer viable it's also a water supply that is also no longer viable. You know, one of the other impacts of climate change is there are places that are literally running out of water. There's, a, I believe, a city um, in the southern tip of, Af of Africa that has run out of water, literally. 
So you have places that run out of water and you have other places with tainted water supplies with methylmercury and you have food supplies that are also being tainted, entire food chains that are being stunted with this uh, release or that could be stunted with re released mercury, increased global temperatures, places where you can no longer grow food, famines, mass migrations. It's not looking good, folks. Those are just some of the effects that climate change will happen in the long term. We have released the genie out of the bottle. Unfortunately, we cannot put this genie back. However, we can at least stop more damage from happening to the environment. How? By transferring over to a clean, green energy uh, system. We need to stop putting fossil or stop burning fossil fuels and stop putting more carbon into the air. If we can actually summon the political will to do that, then look again. We can't stop climate change. It's already happening now. It's baking to the cake. But we can prevent it from getting even worse. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.